So I want to talk a little bit about what I'm doing with the pitot tube. Um, I am using the Dynon pitot tube with the AOA. And you have to come up with a way to mount this. RANS gives you all the materials to do just a standard pitot tube. It's just an aluminum tube that comes out of this inspection cover, bends over, and that's it. If you're doing anything more substantial, like a Garmin or the Dynon, you've got to come up with something. And I've looked at what a few builders were doing, and they're coming out here, I believe, or maybe they were going inboard. Anyway, they were attaching it to this, uh, they were cutting an airfoil shape in the skin, they were creating some bracketry and structure off of a rib and mounting it out there. And I'd considered that, but I wanted to do something that I thought would be easier and use the existing inspection hole cover, kind of like Rand's has you do, but find a way to mount this thing. Now you can't just take this and mount it to the inspection cover because these covers are only 20 thousandths. They're very flimsy. They're not structural. So I knew I had to come up with something different. Also the skin around this area, the skin is very thin and you couldn't just expect to, even with a thicker cover, expect that to work. So you, I did have to come up with a way to uh, increase the strength in this area. But, but I didn't wanna do a lot of extra work. I mean, the whole point of this was make it easy. So I came up with a solution that I think is, is really good. And it's so far, I haven't got this riveted in yet, but so far it seems really stout and strong. What I did was I created these doublers here. A main doubler, this little ring doubler, and then of course here's the cover plate. Had all these, I drew all these up in CAD. I used the existing radial array hole pattern here that Rands uses, um, and just extended this out into just a big square doubler, and drew it all up in CAD, had it all CNC cut, and uh, this basically is the kit that is going to uh, mount the pitot tube. Uh, one thing I did a little bit differently is I did clinch nuts. I like these better than the uh, slip-on Tinnerman style, and I didn't want to go through the hassle of using actual nut plates here. For something like this, these clinch nuts are perfect. These are 4 millimeter M4, because I use uh, M4 by 10 screws to attach the cover plate here. So I'll show you what I did now. There's an extra operation that I do on this part that hasn't been done yet, and we'll do that. I'll show you how it's done. But in short, I'll just kind of show you this plate will fit up under the skin. And again, it uses these existing holes. The only thing I have to, holes I have to add are the extra holes I have placed in the corner of the square doubler, which are these holes here, 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 and here. So I did have to match drill that onto the skin. Uh, but then once that was done, the way it goes is the ring doubler fits up under there. That's just to give this an extra bit of thickness um, right where the cover plate's gonna go. And this would slip up under the skin and just gets riveted in place. But there is something I do extra, and I haven't done it on this one yet. I was gonna show you. The reason I have an extra here is I actually made about 10 of these and offered these to uh, S21 builders on the Facebook group and uh, sold them all. So, and I offered them for pretty much my cost, um, plus a couple bucks just for my time for having to organize this whole thing. 50 bucks is what I was doing these for. Um, but let me show you what I do on this to increase the rigidity of this part and uh, make it really stout for when this, when this ultimately ends up getting mounted up there like so. Right now this part, it's 40 thousandths thick. So it's, you know, it's got some stiffness to it, but it's still, still a little flexible. And I wanna to try to make this uh, as rigid as I can uh, in this axis here. So I've marked this front, this is how it's gonna sit. I wanna increase the, the rigidity in this axis here. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to roll a joggle on the left and right sides here. So what I like to do is I'll just take my Sharpie and I'm not getting exact here, but I'm coming over about a quarter of an inch and I'm just marking a line like so. And then I'm gonna mark one on the other side as well. 
And these are gonna be my guidelines for when I'm uh, putting this through my uh, bead roller. So I'm over here at my bead roller. I've got my dies, my joggle dies set on here. I've got the height, everything adjusted, my distance between the dies. I've got it all set to where I'm gonna get just the right joggle that I want. I'm just gonna take and align this edge of the die pretty much right on my reference line. And I'm just gonna feed it in. Just gonna manually hand crank this in here. Steering the part so that it constantly is keeping that line on the edge of the die. All the way out to the end. And I have a nice little joggle there. And that, that like quadruples the stiffness of the part in that axis. So let me go ahead and do this side now. There we go. So we have a joggle on both sides and nice and stiff. Now what I like to do here is I like to go ahead and I'm just gonna by hand form this into a slight curve, a little bit more of a curve at the front because what I'm trying to do is get this to the shape of the, um, the underside of the wing skin. It starts to curve up there. So I wanna just give this a slight curve so that this piece being flat isn't forcing that wing skin to kind of match that flatness. I want to follow that curve. So I'm just coming in here just by hand, giving a little bend, a little bit more towards the front, a little bit less towards the back. And you can see I end up with a slight curve. So now we have this part complete. Nice and stiff. This would then slip up under the skin. Of course, I would, uh, let's not forget this ring. That would fit right in there. That would slip up under the skin, get all cleat out in place, which is the stage I'm at in the construction here. Now let's talk about this. Um, this is the Dynon Pedo tube, as I mentioned, with the AOA. This is the non-heated version. I didn't opt for that. The heated version, it would be the same. You just would have a heating element here and a power wire. And this is the Dynon mount that you can get. Uh, I made some modifications to this mount. Uh, one of the things I did was I cut it shorter. It was really long and there was just no need to have the pitot tube sticking way down. So I cut, I don't remember how much, I cut maybe an inch and a half off or so. I, honestly, I feel like I probably could have cut it another half inch, uh, but We'll see, that's something I can always trim later if I want. Um, also, I trimmed off the uh, front edge of it. The Dynon mount normally has a little step. I think that's for um, mounting to a spar of maybe an RV or something, I don't know. We don't need that, so I just trimmed that off. And then I used the holes that I have in the, that I drew in this plate, let me grab a blank. There are the four holes next to the airfoil profile there. And I just match drilled through those holes into the plate. And in this case, I think this is gonna suffice. I just did a uh, M4 tap, just drilled and tap. I suppose uh, if I, I could throw some lock nuts on that, eh, maybe I'll do that um, just to kind of keep it secure. You'll notice though that I did put some washers on the back side there. And the reason for that is this wing skin starts to curve and the pitot tube was kind of following the tangent of that curve, and it was gonna set it at an angle. Now the wing's upside down, so normally it would be kind of tilted up a little bit. And I don't want that because I want the pitot to be at cruise attitude. I want the airflow coming straight into the pitot tube. So just a couple of shims or, or washers back there to shim that up did the trick. And what's nice about that is that's tunable. So sometime later I decide I need a little more angle, less angle, whatever, add a few washers, take a few out, there you go, real easy. Also notice um, on the holes that mount it, um, I slotted them. Um, you'll see they're not just holes, they're slotted. And the reason I had to do that was I found, and I'm not sure why, uh, I found the, this radial array of holes that Rance has in the skin is actually not clocked 
perfectly uh, to where you would have a parallel line for your pitot tube. The first one I made, when I put the pitot tube on, the pitot tube was pointed outboard a little bit. A couple of degrees, not bad, just a couple of degrees. Probably wouldn't have really mattered, but I thought, well, if I slot them, I get some adjustment here, a few degrees, and I'm able to dial in and get it perfectly um, parallel to the, to the line of flight. And the reason I did that, um, since I made multiple of these and, and offered these to a few guys, I wasn't sure across the kits that Rans did if that clocking changed anywhere along the way. So just as easy to slot these, you'll just visually line it right up, torque it down, you're good to go. Now one thing I did, um, this probably wasn't entirely necessary. I just went ahead and did it. It was really easy to do. I took a piece of 25 thousandths, I sheared it and I put it in a brake and I bent it into a nice little lightweight angle. And I'm actually running that under the skin there from this rib to this rib. Uh, this rib has a flange folded over, so it's able to sit right up under that flange and it'll get riveted right through the wing skin, the rib, and this. It comes across, and over here, the flange goes this way. There is no flange coming back this way to do the same, so I trimmed a little piece of this, or I trimmed it right at the end, about a half inch in, folded that over, did the same here, folded that down, and that allowed me... Uh, a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a vertical surface that then I just ran a rivet through the rib into that. And then I just ran um, rivet here, here. Of course, it's going to catch one, two, three, these four holes that are already in the babbler plate as we come across here. And what that did is that just gave me a, just an extra bit of rigidity there. Probably didn't need to do that. The stringer is already running back here and it's good and stiff. But, you know, it honestly, this took me an extra 15 minutes of work to fabricate the part, get it in here, match, drill it, rivet it in place, and it's good and stout. So between this piece here and joggling the edges here, this is 40 thousandths thick. The other little ring here is 40 thousandths, so we've got 80 thousandths thick there, and the cover plate is 40 thousandths. So everything here is just, it's good and stout. And by the time you get this thing on here and screwed down, um, boy, it's, it's good and strong. I compared it to my Cessna, and which my Cessna doesn't even have all this doubler stuff. It's got just this little, little L's on either side of the, uh, the pitot tube mount just going into the wing skins. Now the wing skins are thicker in the Cessna. I think there are 32 thousands in that area. Uh, but I compared this to what's on my Cessna, and it's like twice as stiff. It's good and rigid. So uh, this is, for me, this was a really easy way to do this without having to cut holes in the skin and, and build up structure and whatnot over there. What I also like about this is, check this out, man. You just pop out the six screws, and I've got, you know, you got the quick disconnects here. So you just pop those out, boom, this is up and out of the way. You can get in there, do whatever you need to do. If you need to, I don't know, you need to do anything to this. Not that you ever would, but there you go. So I like it. Really easy to do, and uh, I'm happy with it. I did make 10 of these. I, I sold them in like two days. I was able to offer them for 50 bucks if I made 10. Uh, my price per part that way was at a, at a good price point. Um, I may consider making um, another batch if I get enough requests. I might do another 10. Um, so I guess hit me up if you're interested in this. I can't say whether or not I'll have any, but if I get enough people that want to do it, I'll do it. Hey, worst case scenario, I can send you the CAD files, and you can just have these cut yourself. Um, and if you have a bead roller, uh, then you can put this joggle in. You probably don't need to. If you if you didn't have a bead roller and you wanted to do something, you could do some lightweight angle and you could maybe like rivet it to this, um, flute it a little bit, you know, so that you could get the curve, just a slight curve in it. And you could probably just rivet some angles to it if you wanted to. And really, if you wanted to just leave it flat, you, 
could do that too. That's how I, actually, I had it at first, and it was still pretty pretty damn strong, but I just figured, why not? Why not joggle it and just really increase the rigidity there? But anyhow, I'm rambling. Uh, that's what I did for the pedo tube. I'm happy with how that turned out. And that's how I'm going to proceed.